Today's episode is called, Let's Learn About Dublin. We'll start our journey by learning a bit about the history of Dublin and how it became the city it is today. You'll get to know more about the local Dubliners and some of their favorite traditional Irish foods. Dublin is home to numerous historical places, such as Trinity College, which is home to the world-famous Book of Kells. The city is also full of entertainment, and the Gaelic Games will be a great place to learn about some fun and traditional sports. Finally, you'll get to know about a few of Dublin's most famous authors and what type of weather and seasons they experienced while living in the city. Are you ready? Let's learn about Dublin! The history of Dublin begins in the 8th century when the Vikings established a settlement on the River Liffey and named it Blackpool, or Dub Lynn. The city was constantly being attacked and rebuilt for the first 200 years of its existence. Despite the attacks, the city was able to grow and establish trading with other settlements. The population in the city grew rapidly, and Dublin soon became one of the biggest cities in Ireland. Dublin was ruled by England during the 14th century, and it became known as the second city of the British Empire. The city prospered, and the population grew as a result of the city's wool and linen trades. It was also during this time that Queen Elizabeth I founded Trinity College in Dublin, which is one of the oldest universities in Europe. Sadly, the city of Dublin was affected by the plague in 1650, and almost half of its citizens passed away. Dublin continued to grow during the 18th century, and many local districts such as Parliament House, Marion Square, and City Hall were built. A police force was added, and projects like the Grand Canal and O'Connell Bridge were completed. However, life in Ireland changed in 1916 due to fighting for control of the country. Ireland was able to gain their independence, and the Republic of Ireland was established. Ireland and Dublin have changed since its beginning, but its people are still proud of their heritage and traditions. The city of Dublin is known for having some of the friendliest citizens in Europe. Dublin is a multicultural city, with many of its two million citizens immigrating from other countries. Dubliners love jokes and are known for their senses of humor. Don't take it personal if someone jokes with you, as it's a sign of appreciation and they are only teasing. Dublin is a UNESCO city of literature and hosts over half a dozen book festivals. This is partly because Dublin has been home to Nobel Prize winning authors such as Samuel Beckett and George Bernard Shaw. We'll learn more later about the specific authors that had an impact on the city. Dubliners are proud of their heritage and numerous monuments and statues dedicated to Dublin's famous citizens are spread across the city. Citizens of Dublin's enjoy having crick or some quality banter with each other. In fact, it's one of the most important parts of daily life in Dublin, as it encourages people to socialize and speak with one another. Locals gather together in parks, pubs, and gardens for some crake after a long day of work. Whether it be a taxi driver, waiter, or police officer, there's always someone who would love to speak with you about their day. The purpose of crake for Dubliners is to remember to laugh and not take life too seriously. They feel that it's important to be lighthearted and enjoy life. Irish stew is one of Dublin's traditional food dishes from the 19th century, and it was created by the early Irish as a way to use their leftover foods. The stew is cooked slowly, over very low heat, until all the flavors combine, and then it's served with a side of Irish soda bread. Irish stew is regularly served in Dublin's pubs and restaurants on cold days and holidays like St. Patrick's Day. Boxty pancakes are traditional Irish potato pancakes that are associated with the Northern Midlands region and Leitrim County. They are made by mixing potatoes, flour, and milk to form a batter. It's then slowly cooked like a pancake until golden brown. The pancakes are normally served with butter or sugar but they are most often found served with an Irish breakfast of eggs, bacon, sausage, black pudding, toast, and tomato slices. Coddle is a traditional Irish wintertime dish that dates back to the 18th century. It is similar to Irish stew, but coddle is made with different leftover foods like sausages, onions, potatoes, and rashers or bacon. The dish is often served at weekly family gatherings, 
and it is easy to make as all the ingredients are cooked together in one big pot. Caudle is also one of Dublin's favorite comfort foods, and you can find this dish being ordered all over the city on cold days. The spire, or Monument of Light, is often the first sight that visitors notice as they make their way into Dublin. It's a large stainless steel monument located on historic O'Connell Street, and it stands over 120 meters tall. The spire was built to be a replacement for a previous monument that had been destroyed called the Nelson Pillar. The monument is designed so that the movements of the city are reflected on the surface and the setting sun changes the colors of the spire as day transitions into night. Daniel O'Connell was an Irish political leader who was best known for campaigning for Catholic freedoms, as well as for uniting Great Britain and Ireland into one United Kingdom. He is known as the Republic of Ireland's Great Emancipator, and in 1882, the Daniel O'Connell statue in Dublin was erected. It's located on Dublin's main thoroughfare, O'Connell Street, which was also named in honor of the Catholic Liberator. James Larkin was the first leader of the Irish Labour Party and a champion for Ireland's poorest workers. Big Jim was known for his work in the 1913 Dublin lockout, where he fought for the rights of unskilled workers to unionize. Larkin coined the now famous phrase, a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Today, a large bronze statue of Jim Larkin stands on O'Connell Street in Dublin, not far from our previous statue of Daniel O'Connell. Trinity College was founded by Queen Elizabeth in 1592, and it is the oldest university in Ireland. It has educated some of Ireland's most well-known names, such as Oscar Wilde, Samuel Beckett, and President Mary Robinson. The college is also one of the most visited tourist attractions in Dublin. Along with providing an amazing education, the school has dining halls, cafeterias, and hosts more than 150 different student social and sporting clubs. The old library of Trinity College is the largest library in Ireland, and it holds a copy of every book ever printed in the UK and Ireland. The famous Long Room was added in 1732 CE, and it holds 200,000 of the library's oldest books. The Long Room is also home to Dublin's most famous book, the Book of Kells. The Book of Kells dates back to 800 CE, and it is a beautifully illustrated Latin telling of the four Gospels of the New Testament. The book is an illuminated manuscript, which is a type of book that has been decorated with gold, vibrant colors, and small pictures. The Book of Kells was created by a group of monks at St. Columba's Order of Iona, and it was brought to Kells in 795 CE to keep it safe from Viking raiders. It wasn't until nearly 1,000 years later that the book needed to be moved for safekeeping again, but this time it was sent to Trinity College in Dublin. The Book of Kells arrived at the school in 1661 CE, and it has been kept safe there since. St. Patrick's Cathedral is one of the few buildings left from Dublin's medieval era, and it was built on the site where St. Patrick baptized Christian converts 1,500 years earlier. The cathedral also hosts a world-famous choir that has been performing daily since 1432. Dublin Castle is one of Dublin's oldest and most historical buildings. The castle was originally used over 700 years ago by England when they had control over Ireland. In 1922, control over the castle was given to Ireland after the Irish War of Independence. It has hosted Irish state events and welcomed famous visitors such as Benjamin Franklin, Queen Victoria, and Nelson Mandela. Since 1938, Dublin Castle has been the location of each one of Ireland's president's inaugurations. Another historical jewel in Dublin is the Liffey Bridge, or Hopenny Bridge. It was built in 1816 by ferry operator William Walsh, and it was the first pedestrian bridge across the River Liffey. The city allowed him to charge a toll of a half penny from anyone crossing it for the next 100 years. The bridge was built as a shortcut to reach the Crow Theater because it was difficult to ferry so many visitors on boats. The bridge is now free to cross and hosts tens of thousands of Dublin's visitors each year. 
Stevens Green Park is a centuries-old public space that's located in the center of Dublin. The park is a source of entertainment in the city as it provides an open space for outdoor activities in a bustling city. Stevens Green is home to many of Dublin's historical sculptures that celebrate Ireland's past, and it's been the location of numerous historical events. Today, visitors are entertained by the park's many walking paths, wildlife areas, and gardens. Grafton Street is one of Dublin's shopping streets, and it connects College Green at Trinity College to Stevens Green. The street is busy morning, noon, and night, as it is a magnet for street performers, fiddle players, and singers. Visitors can enjoy shopping at Grafton Street's many boutiques, and a visit to Bully's Oriental Cafe, which has been a Dublin icon since 1927. Don't forget to visit the statue of the famous Irish story character, Molly Malone, that sits at the end of the street. Kilmainham Goal was a prison that was built in 1796 to replace Dublin's former county jail, and it would go on to hold many of Ireland's most famous inmates. The prison was closed in 1924 after World War I had ended, but Dublin citizens wanted to maintain it as a memory of its past. Kilmainham Goal was restored during the 1960s and reopened as a museum in 1971. Today, it is one of the country's most important historical monuments and attracts over 500,000 visitors per year. Dublin is home to a range of indigenous Irish sports called the Gaelic Games. Gaelic football, hurling, and handball are unique to Ireland and have long been a part of the Irish culture. Gaelic football is a very physical sport, which is much like a combination of rugby and soccer, except you're allowed to handle the ball. It's played on a very large field with tall goal posts at each end, and the objective is to score points by pushing the ball over the goal line or kicking it between the goal posts. Another traditional Irish Gaelic game is called hurling, and it is considered to be the oldest and fastest field sport in the world. It's been played in Dublin for hundreds of years, and it is the national sport of Ireland. Hurling is a cross between field hockey and lacrosse, and it's played with a stick and ball. The game that was once played by Irish warriors on the battlefield is now played in front of thousands of cheering fans. Gaelic handball is a game that is played on a small court that is similar to racquetball or squash, except the players use their hands instead of rackets. Wall ball is a version of handball in which competitors use their hands to hit a soft ball against a single wall to try and score points. Small alley or four wall handball is usually played indoors with a firmer and faster ball than handball. Both versions are played internationally with competitions held all over the world. Dublin is known for being the home city of many famous Irish writers and James Joyce is thought to be Ireland's most famous author. He is one of the most important authors of the 20th century, and he wrote famous titles such as Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake. Joyce was known for his style called modernism, and he would write about Irish struggles and the difficult life for citizens. Today, James Joyce is immortalized as a statue on North Earl Street in Dublin. Oscar Wilde was born in Dublin and is considered to be one of the greatest playwrights and poets of the Victorian period. Wilde wrote hundreds of poems about aesthetic values or the thought of making art for the sole sake of making art. He was well known for his witty personality and flamboyant style of wardrobe. Oscar was in love with another man during a time when society was not as accepting and he was placed on trial. He was sentenced to prison and afterwards spent his time trying to help improve the living conditions of those who were still locked away in Ireland's prisons. Samuel Beckett was born in Dublin in 1906 and would go on to one day be awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. He studied at Trinity College and traveled to Paris in 1928 to become a student of James Joyce. His specialty was playwriting and his most famous work was a play called Waiting for Godot. Beckett also received military honors from France after showing bravery during wartime. Dublin's weather is fairly comfortable in the summer cold and wet in the winter, and it's windy all year long. The city doesn't get as much rain as other parts of the country, but Dublin does stay partly cloudy for most of the year. 
Springtime in Dublin is the driest time of the year, and it's when the temperature outside begins to warm up. Bring an umbrella if you visit in May, as Dublin tends to get rain showers when the spring season changes to summer. The city only experiences about 1,450 hours of sunshine per year, and the summer is when you're most likely to experience a sunny day in Dublin. The temperatures in the city rise in June and are at their warmest in July. Dublin doesn't get too hot during the summer, but it has been known to get very hot at times. Surprisingly, August is the month that receives the most rain as the warm summer air mixes with cool winds from the ocean to create rain clouds. Dublin has a maritime climate, which means that its weather is influenced by the ocean, and this keeps the winter weather from getting too cold. January is the coldest month of the year in Dublin, and it's when the city receives the fewest hours of daylight due to its northern European latitude. Dublin can also experience hail and windstorms during the wintertime due to the wet and windy climate coming in from the Atlantic Ocean. Let's review! We started by learning a bit about the history of Dublin, and then about the people that make the city so unique. Then we found out about delicious Irish foods like boxed pancakes, and that Dublin has numerous monuments dedicated to its history. Our journey taught us about the world-famous Trinity College and how it's only one of the many historical locations that Dublin has to offer. Dublin is never short on entertainment, and the Gaelic games are great places to view some traditional Irish sports. Finally, we learned about some of the famous writers that call Dublin home, and the details about the different seasons and weather in the city. Until next time, welcome to Dublin! Who knew there'd be so much to learn about Dublin? I had such a great time learning with you, and you've made learning a lot of fun. Links can be found in the description below for my social media, YouTube channel, and other books. Finally, and most importantly, never forget that you're special, you're perfect, and you're loved. See you next time.